All right, let's get started. Zero. Calculator. I bet you won't forget next time, huh? Okay, I asked Dilhan to work out a full length problem that you will find very helpful tomorrow night. He's going to go through it, and I'm going to inject commentary <coughs> as needed. This is not just any old problem. This is problem 2.2 two. Uh, of the lead text. A little background on this problem. It looks, smells, and tastes like real data, but it's not. He uh, did it by hand. Just pick points off of a dimensional solution. Exciting! Okay. So this problem has been analyzed by everybody in the universe. I remember when I was your age, the software was just coming out. Somebody came up and they said, that problem is wrong. You know why that problem is wrong? Because he gave a TP of, what was it, 13,169 hours, about a year and a half. He just made it up. So whenever you try to match the full history behind <coughs> using that, it doesn't work. So anyway, rate, that's just a little background. Anything else you can think of? And also, we are not using the data that he used in the book. We oh, regenerated. regenerated. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then this is even better. So, what he did is he took the model that uh, we, you know, defined, and he regenerated the problem for the full sweep. So this should work no matter what. Yeah. But the one in the book won't because it's disconnected. He ran the full thirteen thousand. But okay. not, I am not showing the drawdown. No, 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 no. But you ran the full history. Yeah. Any questions before we start? You will see this tomorrow night. This is an easy. Yes. Maybe 15. So, Mr. Beard, you are assured that you pay attention. You may actually make 15 points. <laughs> yes. Sorry? This will be posted after class. So, that's really like 50 right there. Uh, given that the average was a 30 the last time, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> we have nine problems. We're actually going to have to go back and re-allocate uh, points because I think we may have more than 100 points or less than 100 points. I don't know. We did it. You know, it's a good marriage like we have. We did it sort of independently. Was it eight hours? It'll be what it is. It'll be eight hours. So... No, you can't because uh, you got McVeigh's class on Friday morning, right? You got some Schachter's class. Memoir. Oh, well, God, you know, give me a break, man. Sorry. You cannot do that to me. I will not have that on my conscience. Poor <laughs> <laughs> Mamora already doesn't know how many people are in the class. <laughs> Don't do that. I already heard that there's like five people in the front row and he never you know, looks bad. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. You don't have to come to this class on Friday, right? Yeah. Yes. We'll give you Friday off. Because you sort of already have given us your time on Friday. <laughs> but you guys, we're going to stop the test in eight hours. After eight hours, you're worthless anyway. I know you want to go 12, but, you know. I mean, if we do it on Friday night, you can go all the time you want. No, Mr. Harlan, there won't be a little school bus for you. Put your hands up. What? I think if you went in and told him you had herpes simplex 10, <laughs> said, you know, Dr. Lamar is real contagious, I don't think that work between you and me. You got to take one for the team sooner or later. <laughs> T-Bow and Vanetta, you guys can do it, wouldn't you? You get hit by a ball. <laughs> I don't know what that meant. But <laughs> I suspect it was a class before us. <laughs> Alright, so y'all pay attention. Dylan's going to go through and I'll interject commentary. 
Marmaine, I'm a little worried, man. You look a little psychotic these days. <laughs> Have you been taking your medicine again? All right. Go after it, John. Okay, actually, we asked this problem in last year's exam. What did you just say? We asked this exact same problem last year on the exam. So he, here is the properties. So you will be given something like this, and then you will find everything you need on this page. Okay. And we are, we will be looking at a pressure buildup test in this. So when you look at the pressure buildup test, the first thing you have to look is the production time. Okay. And in this case, the production time is very, very long. So you should be able to perform all the analysis. Well, in the pressure buildup analysis, some analysis consider the rate effects, and some analysis techniques do not consider rate effects. But your, if your production time is long enough, then you don't need to take the rate effects into account. And here the production time is thirteen thousand six hundred and thirty hours and the your build up time will be one hundred and forty four hours, as far as I remember. <coughs> No, you don't need to write this down. I mean, this is the drawdown time, 1,630 hours, and this is the build-up time, 144 hours. So it is very long enough. And the meaning of that is, probably don't have to use more time. Yeah. But we are in. Yeah. Okay, so f the first thing we are going to do, we are going to look at the early time data. And the reason is, you remember? So what are we getting from the early time data? Only Valbor storage, right? So we are going to find the Valbor storage coefficient. Is there a triangle or over? Okay, so if you remember the Valbor storage domination equation, it was a straight line, right? It is the PWS equals to the intercept. So the intercept will be your shut, the pressure at the shut-in time. Plus your slope term. Time started here. So this is the Valbor storage domination equation for the buildup. And it ind indicates a straight line. So when I look at the data and see the linear trend, then I am just going to fit You will be, you will be given the data. What? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. 
So you are fitting only the linear part. So you don't need to worry about this data because they are not valuable storage dominated data. And the next thing, we are going to find the slope of this straight line. And this will be. So I'm going to calculate the slope from the my linear trend. So what is that? We expect you to write everything out just like this in five linear details. Mr. Beard, they do so. The approximation. Looks like you're writing it equivalently about. Yes, that's okay. Sorry, I didn't get. Rounding. Well. Well, the exact value here, as far as I remember, 702. I mean, you can say 700, as long as you are consistent with your other analysis. Okay. And just believe everybody's answer will be different. So it's how you show your work and how you verify your results. It's not, I mean, we are looking for 702. I mean, it could be 700. Okay. Yep. Yeah, but we haven't. Okay. <laughs> okay, the question was in the previous year's exam, we were forcing the unloadable storage from the log log plot. Actually, what we are going to do this, we are going to do this in the future, but we haven't seen forcing log log plot slope yet, so we will just do this for the moment. In simple language, if we haven't covered it in class, <laughs> okay, so this plot is very simple. All you need to do is find the slope and find the intercept. And the intercept tells you the pressure at the instant of shedding, and the slope will give you the value for Valbor search coefficient. Okay, so now let's go. Okay, so this is the answer to previous year's exam. And you see the first part, only Valbor search dominated. Here. So the data is here linear, and then it's not linear anymore. And then here is our intercept, 702. And this is the slope. So if we go to calculations, so here's the equation for the Valbor storage coefficient. Be sure you are going to be responsible for all the equations. Open book, open notes, test. I'll send out an email later on, telling you what you can and cannot have. If you suddenly go insane because you cannot find an equation, 
It is not my responsibility, nor is it Bill Hunt's. We were also approached today by the IT manager, mentioning that several people have exceeded their quota by quite a stand. So, I don't know anything about that. Sorry? You can bring food. You're going to be separated. You won't be able to be anywhere near your neighbor. Try to keep your hygiene reasonable. Can we leave? No. Yeah, please, friends. Yes. You can go outside and have a cigarette or go to the restroom. But if you disappear to go see Wood Woodpecker or <laughs> something like that, no. I, I thought that was what they were allowed to do. <laughs> Mr. Beard, I think someone in your position needs to be thinking very seriously about the exam and not how to uh, manipulate it to your will. You can pretend to go to the restroom for a couple of hours. That might be okay and believable. <laughs> There's an article for Master Plans over there. It's a recipe. <laughs> yes, they have a laptop. This may not have a laptop. Okay. So, any questions about the Valor search dominated part? This should be very straightforward. So now I am going to the middle time region to find the permeability and the skin factor. This is the part where you better start paying attention. This is the free 10 points. So this is the log log plot, but I am going to skip this for the moment. And we use this log log plot to identify our flow regimes, such as where is the valve storage domination, where is valve storage do distortion, and where is infinite acting radial flow, or where are the boundaries. Okay. Anyway, now let's go to the semi-log plot. So here we are plotting the shut-in pressures versus the shut-in time. So as I mentioned before, we are neglecting the rate effects here because the production time is very long. So if you remember from the previous classes, during the infinite acting radial flow regime, when you plot the pressures versus the logarithm of time, it will show you a straight line, right? So we need to find the straight line on the plot here. No, it's not easy. <laughs> that might be a little generous. Barber Paul. You're saying that the stuff on the right is okay. Stuff on the left is. Stuff on the far right is. must label everything as well.
Okay, when we look at this plot, we see four flow regimes. And the first flow regime is your Valbor storage domination. This is what we just saw, the straight line. And after the Valbor storage domination, you see the effects of reservoir, but you also you see the effects of the Valbor. So it's going to be a Valbor storage distortion flow regime. And then next, you will see only the effects from the reservoir. So it will be your infinite acting radial flow regime. So this is where you are going to find the permeability and the skin factor. And then after the infinite acting radial flow regime, if there are boundaries, then you will see the boundary effects. <coughs> yep. <laughs> Basically, you, you need to see the log log plot to do that. Okay. But we're not going to do that. Obviously. Yeah. No, the shape is linear. There. It's going to be somewhat similar to the shape later. It might be a good idea to go through this. This will be posted shortly after class. And also, look at the solution from last week. But in last year, I saw some of you. Fit it like this. That's this is. Be a big event. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so how, how are we going to calculate the slope? So we need to read from our line, not the data. So the first point, the second point. Who says four? Who said one? Four. Okay, can somebody calculate this? Somebody calculate. And always write down the units. If you don't write the units, then your points will be cut. Yeah. And also we are looking for the intercept. So can I say, is, is this the PWS one hour? Okay. Sorry. We 
we don't have to give you the total number of hours that it's shut in. You can see it from the graph. But the producing town, we have to give you, or we have to give you the production graph with it. But if we gave you 113,630 hours production, and then 144 hours shut in, the graph would be 100 times larger. So Sorry? He's asking us how do we know there's boundary effects? And Dillon probably uh, is going to refer to his favorite line, which is the log log fly. Because when you're looking at the derivative, you can see it, it sticks out like that. What you're basically looking for is deviation from the log really straight line. Now, the likelihood of seeing this in practice is pretty small because nobody shuts in well for thousand hours or 144 hours before unless something happens you know which like the guy was talking about earlier this week he tries to move a little gas out and shuts it in the room and tries to move a little gas out that could be something like that i think your slope is wrong right it should be around 70. yeah 69 or something just for reference this is a cartoon don't use this religiously he has gotten the slope in considerable error. He's got 54 PSI per cycle. It should, it should be. be substantially higher, more Six. like 69. Why don't you draw in 69 in black? Do you have a uh, straight edge? Oh, yeah, you do? Yeah. Here, let me hold it for you. <laughs> What's the matter with you, sicko? All right, it's probably more like that, only I held it too high, so. Sorry? Delta T? TP is what you're thinking about. The total producing time. Okay. And then we got the 144 delta T from the graph. No, we would tell you. We just didn't this time. Okay. You don't need to know it, it's not used anywhere. You can look on the graph, the last data point is here. Now, when we start doing exercises, we're going to give you all the data. And you know, you just go down the list and look at the last one, and there it is. Did we, we give the data for all the problems on the exam? Yeah. Okay, so I mean, for this one, we gave okay. it. So, probably do a little bit. You really are whacked out to know the last data point. You can read it off the graph. Okay, so we found our slope and we found our intercept and then we are going to use these values in this equation and then find the permeability and the skin factor. Okay, so this is the key and you see the slope is... 70 psi per cycle. So um, we may want to mention that when you guys are working this out, I want to see this equation with all the numbers substituted in it. But also, if you want to then go down below it and put, you know, that this is 12, this is 73, this is minus 8, this is this, that's that. That does help us check. Admittedly, we're going to be going pretty fast when we're grading. But the more you document, the better off you are. I mean, we, I guess, safe to say, we try to give as much credit as possible. But if you do not show your work, that's the end of the story. We have no idea what you did, zero. We have some idea what you did, wrong, zero. <laughs> Now that you see Mr. Powell at the end of the day, said, I've seen the age So, I want it to look just like this. Here's the calculation with the units. So the permeability is 7.65 and the skin factor is 6.25. Mr. Wayne, 
came late, we talked about the master cleanse diet. You were elected to try it. <laughs> <laughs> we brought lemon juice, maple syrup, and cayenne and juice, pepper. And also, you can take a laxative to keep things moving, it says. <laughs> You're just going to lose water weight? Yeah. You did the same thing by sweating. Any questions about this? Last slides are coming up. Flatman to the 162.6 calculation. Flatman to the 162.6. Uh, it's a typo, I mean, it's not showing you. The boss there. Zero. Yeah. It's got to hurt, do Yeah. <laughs> I would not spend an inordinate amount of time programming this stuff in your calculator because I don't see the work. I've had people come up to me and go, what is this? <laughs> All right, this is the Horner time plot. So the thing about the Horner time horn and the Horner plot is your axis is reversed. Okay. So when you look at the Horner time, big number, big number corresponds to early time. Okay, and the small number corresponds to late time. What's the smallest number you can have on a order time? One. Okay, so since you are not going to use the log log plot, let just you will see this. Now let's find the straight line in this data. I so have a better idea. How many straight lines here? Since Miss Lieber is concerned. <laughs> Why don't you come up and guide Bill Hunt through this exercise? No? You want to try? Well, you can do it remotely, just tell him what to do. This looks like a straight line, right? Bill Hunt, go ahead and draw it in. No, the big one. Is this? <laughs> Sorry? That's wrong. Well, the first thing you're supposed to do is draw the barber pole. So you distinguish what's what. So Miss Lou, tell them where to draw those. She says that's wrong, Bill. So erase it. <laughs> now tell them where to draw the barber poles. Why don't you come down and just point? I don't know if this is right. We come just here? make a tick. Okay, like from like here to like there. I think we got some more tick. <laughs> you take it orally, by the way. <laughs> you also see the boundaries on. Yeah, but that's like. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I have. Yeah. Is that right? That's correct. You guys, parents that have ever had a kidney stone. So once you do this, you need to Draw the isolate the. Uh, Radio flow. Okay. <laughs> Why do we want to see barber poles? We want something ugly, something big, something distinct, <laughs> something nobody would confuse for anything else. Okay, so once you are in the infinite action radio flow, just draw your straight line. Daphne, how was your uh, wedding? How do I erase it? Hey, yeah. I thought you were just 
Okay, the one hour will be when you put one into the horner time. It's when it goes to T P or delta T? No delta T. Okay, let me explain. Alright guys, Miss Leva has done your dirty work for you. Okay, this is what you need to do actually. Distinguish the flow regimes, and once you identify the infinite acting radial flow, draw your straight line. And once you draw your straight line, find the slope. So let's find the slope now. <coughs> How many log cycles we have here? Count them. That's not the same as the other one. Always check. How many times have we seen people go from order to semi-log and use the same number of logs? Right here? They work the same. No reason they're supposed to be. Remember also that you're working in order time now, not in time. So the P PWS one hour will be tricky because you are looking at delta T at one hour. But we are using the Horner time, so we need to calculate the Horner time, TP plus delta T plus delta T. And at one hour, that is 13,631. This pleasure. Where is 13,631 on this graph? Remember, it's going backwards. See it? This is 10,000, this is 20,000. So it's somewhere in between here. If you use a fat lead pencil, okay, that'd be okay. Okay, you need to plug this number, which is <coughs> to find the PWS one hour. Yeah. TP plus delta T over delta T. How come what? The equation below? Okay, okay. 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 That's correct. But I mean, the, 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 the equation is for your reference. I mean, the formula for permeability and skin factor you will see in the next slide. Okay. 
I mean, this is just for reference. This is the general equation for the build-up using Horner time. So the equation for the permeability is same. Come on, guys. Okay. For the Horner time, the equation for permeability is same. Including the type of. Yeah. yeah. But for the scale factor, you have this additional term here. Can anyone tell us what 13,630 divided by 13,631 is? Mr. Zanero, since you brought your calculator, I suspect it's 0 0.9999 something. Take the LOG of that. I suspect it's 0, 0.000 with a negative sign somewhere, right? It's just one button. One log base 10 or half. LOG. 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 And another name for that is? Alright, so because it's so big, it doesn't matter. And if somebody else was asking me, Adam, a minute ago, when do we really have to worry about corner time? You're going to see a very famous case shortly, the four day case, yeah. where they shut in for 15 hours and then, or sorry, they produced for 15 and shut in for 28 or something like that. That time, corner time, it's going to make a world of difference. You will not get the same interpretation. Go. Yes. So, in your practical application, if the production time is really, really long, it's going to be Another way of putting it is if you don't know the production time, you can, you can neglect it. The problem with the software, as I was telling Adam, is every software has its built into it. You must give it the production history, which is kind of catty wall, because your brain is not going to be thinking about that. You're going to be thinking about flows and pressure, not the rates. But once you load the rates, if they're wrong, I'm not talking about they're not synchronized. The software, you can work with that synchronizer. I'm talking about if the numbers are wrong. Let's say you don't know the production history and you put something in. Then that carries over into the correct, incorrect nature of the superposition. <laughs> what happens if you have more than one rate change? In this case, we had only one rate change. We had a drawdown and a shut-in. What if you have five or six rate changes? Use the last rate. Let's just say that might come in. All right. Use the last rate. <coughs> Yes, for the practical aspect of looking at a build-up, you can use the last rate, <laughs> as long as they're not changing much. But in general, you're going to have to apply a superposition to all of them. We covered this. Dr. Shecker still doesn't have his glasses. Okay, the last thing, if you see the boundary effects, then you can find the average reservoir pressure. Three minutes. And we already did this. Okay. And we derive this. So, when you plot the shedding pressure versus the derivative of the shedding pressures, and if you see a straight line trend. Okay, which one is it? Which direction are you looking for? You're looking for where the derivative goes to zero. So this plot is also backwards. This is large trend. The other side is small time, so which side are you going to be looking at? At the left. The largest time was over here. Now the problem with this methodology is it's stupid. It doesn't tell you if something's wrong. 
You will get a false positive from this many, many times. And I don't really know what a false positive means. Dillon has drawn in probably the most accurate representation. Maybe you could be a little less, take a few more points. Do we know what the exact was from the simulator? 78 or 77 something? I don't know. I mean, you could draw it in. Go ahead and write your number out. Right, we can yeah, this is the Dillheim line, and this is the time line. Basically the same. I like it better now that I've seen the line draw. I will make you an unprecedented guarantee. You will see this again shortly. And here is the answer. So the straight line passes through. The last four points. <laughs> and the extrapolation gives us the value for the average reservoir pressure. Is that always possible? 